Thank you, and good morning, I guess it's afternoon here already, and welcome to the inaugural Dry Horizons. And thanks all for joining us today. There's so many familiar faces here we've worked with for decades at Aura, and it's just great to see everybody, our whole extended family in the ophthalmology ecosystem here in one room. I'd like to start by expressing our deep gratitude for OIS and their invaluable partnership in co-producing this event. Uh, their collaboration has been instrumental in bringing together today and making it possible, and it's an honor to join forces with such a dedicated team um, as the OIS professionals uh, to host this gathering of basic scientists, clinical scientists, practicing physicians, industry innovators, investors, and of course, patients, some of which we have in the room, and in fact, we are ourselves. As we get into the day, let's talk uh, about a little visualization exercise. Let's start by picturing a typical family morning in a bustling household. You know, as the sun rises, both parents and children prepare for their day. Uh, the mother, an avid reader, finds her eyes uh, unusually itchy and dry as the result of her evening reading and the antihistamines that she takes perhaps for spring allergies. She squints at her phone, trying to catch on uh, up on the emails before the day starts, you know, feeling the strain of her eyes. Across the breakfast table, you've got her son, you know, her teenage son, complaining of his own eyes, feeling scratchy and tired. He's been up late, homework spread out in front of a glaring screen, cheering, uh, chatting with his friends online until the early hours. I've got two teenagers, this is what I experience, <laughs> some of you as well. Um, although their scenarios seem different, they are connected by the common thread of dry eye syndrome, exacerbated by the modern lifestyles that heavily involve digital screens and indoor environments. As they share their discomfort, they realize this is not just their problem, but a growing issue affecting many families, as both parents and children find increasingly at odds with the demands of the digital world. This shared experience underscores the urgency of our gathering here today. So reflecting on this scene, this breakfast scene of a family, it's clear that dry eye syndrome has become a widespread challenge that touches families in their daily lives, likely including many of us here. So today's symposium is designed as a launch pad to propel us forward, transforming challenges into opportunities and ideas into actionable pathways. This is an event um, which is an incubator for the future. Success of our field, um, each presentation, our panel discussions, uh, structured to provide comprehensive insights into the global landscape of dry eye disease. Very excited about the upcoming program. The stark reality of dry eye syndrome is it reveals a critical need and an opportunity. An overwhelming 85% of dry eye patients remain unsatisfied with existing treatments, and only 20% of those are often renewing their prescriptions for those that are on some of the existing drugs that are on the market. This disconnect, it speaks volumes to the unmet need you know, within a huge and growing population that arguably affects 50% of the humans on the planet Earth. So, you know, clintrials.gov, currently running 58. If you go ahead and look for um, you know, all phases, industry-sponsored interventional research, there's 58 current ongoing Trials, I think we're many you know, of us are running several of those at Aura, which is good. Um, but you know, it speaks to the volume of activity and research in the space. The challenge we face in dry eye is monumental. There's multiple underlying etiologies, there's variability in the presentation of the disease, and there's environmental factors that influence the disease progression. Every dry eye research, um, you know, in order to be effective, demands meticulous care and attention to detail. It requires matching the right patient subgroups with the appropriate mechanism action of the drugs, designing protocols that align with the science, simplifying the processes, and ensuring that we conduct the right screenings to enroll the right patients. And all of this has to be done in consideration of regulatory pathways and executed flawlessly at scale and often globally. And then, well, there's this special challenge in dry eye, and that is that, as Wiley Chambers said 10 years ago when we did this in Fort Lauderdale, that it's really a placebo um, is not a, um, just a placebo, it's actually a positive control. And, you know, he says water makes a pretty darn good therapy for dry eye. And this necessitates rigorous approach in clinical trial design, you know, where the consistent application of a tear substitute is a common relief measure. So any active treatment must demonstrate superiority. That creates an additional threshold. So there's so many challenges here. 
Listen, let's come back to the story I opened with. And remember, a patient-centric approach at every step of the process will guide us. The more we understand about the lives of the patients that we seek to serve, and the confounding variables that contribute to their disease, the better we can design and test treatments that work. So with that, I'm going to usher in the day. I invite you all to engage in a full and open and loving way as we share insights, challenge existing paradigms, and forge partnerships that extend beyond these walls. I'm grateful for your expertise, your commitment, your passion, your longtime friendships. Now let's get to work and begin the day.